my invisible friends hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering this is the third video of a series of eight videos dedicated to power in ac steady state we begin this exercise with a metaphor in this metaphor a mother takes her three children to a shopping mall the first one the youngest jimmy goes his own way through the mall and is spending twelve dollars an hour the middle one, Charlize, is spending $5 every hour, and the eldest, Johnny, spends about $20 an hour. It doesn't matter where the children are spending their money. Uh, the end result is that the mother will end paying 12 plus 5 plus $20 every hour. She is spending $37 an hour. It is the same in an electric circuit, no matter where the electric loads are spending joules per second or watts. In the end, the sources will have to come up with that total amount of joules every second to cover the expenses. It doesn't matter if those loads are connected in series or in parallel, if they are near, they are far, it doesn't matter. The point is that to add power, we do not care for the location of the loads or how they are connected, only for the power spent the joules per second spent. If you have three loads and the first one is absorbing an active power P1 and a reactive power Q1 and a second load and a third load, at the end of the day, the sources in the circuit will have to provide the sum of all the active power PT and the sum of all the reactive power QT regardless of where the loads are in the circuit, we could have achieved uh, the same, representing them as complex numbers and adding them up together. Because we remember that to add complex numbers, we add the real parts and we add the imaginary parts, so we get the same values. Or graphically, we could represent the three loads like so. Complex powers, S1, an inductive load, the power factor is lagging, right? That load is absorbing P1 watts and Q1 vars. Positive Q because it's an inductive load. The second load is capacitive, that's why it's absorbing negative Q. And the third one is absorbing positive Q, is another inductive load. The sum of the three, the ones that the sources will have to feed, is inductive as well the sources will have to deliver PT and QT. Let's summarize all that. If we have a group of loads and each one absorbs a complex power S1, S2, S3, etc., we just add all of those vectors together regardless of where they are in the circuit or how they are connected to one another. Just add the powers to get the total absorbed power and that has to be equal to the delivered power by the sources. Telegan's theorem applied to AC steady state would read, if we include all the elements in a circuit, sources, resistors, reactors, and we enter the delivered power as negative and the absorbed power as positive, then we can write that the sum of all the complex power in the circuit must be zero. If we know the complex power, in an element, in a branch, in part of the circuit, and we know the voltage as well, we can compute the current. Remember Steinmetz formula. A complex power is the RMS phasor for voltage multiplied by the RMS phasor for current conjugate. From there, we can solve for the conjugate of the current, but we don't care about the conjugate of the current. We care for the current. So we take the complex conjugate on both sides, and this is the formula that we will use. If we know the complex power and we know the phasor for voltage, divide them, take the complex conjugate, and that is the current. Let's go now with the numerical exercise. The source on the left is feeding two loads through those cables represented by the impedance on the top. It is known the voltage on the far right. 
on the second load on the right 120 volts rms let's assume that the phase of that voltage is zero degrees if we represent those loads as complex power s1 and s2 we can compute the current in the second one you know how to compute that right the current is a again i'm using a very simple notation just lowercase letters that is a current in that one how do i get that from s2 and 120 volts that current a will produce a voltage drop in this impedance you add that voltage drop to 120 and we will get the voltage b with the voltage b and s1 we can compute what is the current in the second load or rather the first one yeah if we count from the left the current c with that current C and A, we add them up according to KCL and we get the current in the source current D. That current will produce a voltage drop in this impedance. We add that voltage drop to B and we get what is a voltage in the source Vs. And then voltage of the source, current in the source, you use Steinmetz formula to get the complex power delivered by that source. Let's do that first with the equations and then with numbers the current a is the complex conjugate of s2 divided by 120 check b will be the sum of 120 and the drop that that current produces in the impedance 0 0.3 plus j 0 0.15 okay and then the current c will be the complex conjugate of S1 divided by B. Mm -hmm. Finally, the current D will be the sum of A and C. I agree. And that current D will produce a voltage drop in 0 0.2 plus J 0 0.04 that if you add that to B, you get the voltage in the source. With the voltage in the source and the current D in the source, we compute the power delivered by the source. How do I know that is delivered power? Because that current is drawn flowing from lower voltage to a higher voltage. Remember the convention. Now let's do that with numbers. Hey, I begin by representing those two loads with complex power. Let me remind you of this. You remember the power triangle, right? Apparent power, reactive power, active power, and the power factor angle theta. If we know the power factor angle theta and the active power P, Q can be computed as P multiplied by the tangent of the power factor angle. But the power factor angle is the arcosine of the a power factor. So let's write this P. Q is P multiplied by the tangent of the arc cosine of the power factor. That is what we will do. Mm -hmm. So I could say that the complex power S is P that multiplies 1 plus J multiplied by the tangent of the arc cosine of the power factor. That is one way of representing that. Let's apply that formula to the powers of S1 and S2. Now with numbers. We begin by representing uh, the two loads as complex power S1, 10,000. Uh, once that is 10 kilowatts, the, uh, the active power multiplied by 1 plus J tangent of the arc cosine of the power factor is 0 0.9. If this sign here is positive, because the load is lagging, that is an inductive load, Q has to be positive, and it is positive. For the second load, S2 is the active power, 15 kilowatts, this one, that multiplies 1 minus J tangent of the arcosine of the power factor, 0 0.8, this one. Why negative? Oh, because that load is capacitive, so Q has to be negative in the end. We are ready. We can use all the formulas and find what you're asking us. The power delivered by the source. The current A, conjugate of S2 divided by 120. B, same as before. The voltage 120 plus the drop produced by A in the impedance of the second cable. 
the currency, the conjugate of S1 divided by the voltage in B, the current D in the source, sum of C plus A, the voltage of the source, the power of the source. So that source is delivering for 1.6 kilowatts, it's delivering negative 896 bars. Well, it is as if it's actually absorbing 896 bars, right? Correct. How do I know that that is when the source delivers? Because again, the current D has been drawn flowing from lower voltage to higher voltage. And that is the solution of that. And my invisible friends, in our next episode, we will work with this exercise. For now, have a good night until the next one.